Does it bug you that uh, people, when they talk about Jacques Fresco in Miami, say that he's someone who's too far ahead of his time? His thinking is, we're not ready for advanced kind of thinking. Who's, uh, who's going to pay for all this? Where's the money coming from? If you took all of the gold and all of the wealth of this country, all of the certificates of debt and all of the land ownership, all of the diamonds and rings, and dumped it off the coast of Japan, as long as you didn't touch the American way of thinking, our technology and our resources, we would not be impoverished, impoverished at all. America's wealth is not its gold, is not its banking institutions. These are false institutions that the entire money structured and materialistic oriented society is a false society. 10 or 15 years from now, our society will go down in history as the lowest development in man. We must put our mind to the social problem. We wish to get away from politics. We wish to get away from the old world method of solving problems. Our cities are going broke. We don't have the money nor the type of mentality required to save our society in politics or government. I didn't know what I wanted to be. You know, since I looked at all things and tried to change all things, wheelchairs, everything, make them better, you know. I found it easy to invent. But then inventions cost money. And I didn't have money for patents. So I used to make thousands of different inventions and just file them away. People always ask, how much will it cost to put up these new cities? Do we have the resources to do it? That's the question, not how much does it cost. That's the old question, doing the monetary system. Money is an invention of convenience for purchasing goods and services in a scarcity environment. If there's a scarcity, say, of water, it is prized, and its price is high. If we find an abundance, suddenly the earth opens up, an abundant supply of fresh water fills every ravine, then nobody cares. There's only a, a policeman in front of something that people have need for and don't have access to. So you put a guard there. But if lemon trees or orange trees and apple trees grew all over the place, you couldn't sell it. Imagine, if you will, if you can, an island of 10,000 people with $10 billion on the island available. No resources, no agrable land, no water, no fish. You have nothing. So what is the real value in the future? resources. Now, in a non-monetary based society, a resource based society, people have access to anything that they need, somewhat like the public library. They can go down and access a camera or a bicycle or a wristwatch. Anything that they need is available without a price tag. That would mean we must achieve a level of production that's so high that scarcity no longer exists. With the elimination of scarcity, the essential incentives change toward problem solving in general. When nations or groups of people do not have access to resources, their behavior is difficult to manage. It becomes aberrant, they lose their mental equilibrium, they cannot arrive at appropriate conclusions. Once people are free mentally, of debt, obligation, servitude, then they can seek new horizons that they've never even dreamt possible before. Also a huge financial burden, which brings us now to the economy. You know, for a great many people, it's become a system that is in part broken, and in part a result of the 2008 financial collapse. So how do we climb out and get to a place of progress? Well, you know, big problems need big ideas. And here's one. Start with this. Money and throw it away. Sounds crazy, right? Well, now we're going to talk to someone who thinks this might be exactly what we need. Peter Joseph is a filmmaker and also the founder of the Zeitgeist movement. Hey there, Peter. I'm, of course, simplifying here. It's not just get rid of money or currency. It's instead making this monetary-based economy, uh, you make it a resource-based economy. Talk about what this actually means. Well, actually, you're half right. A resource-based economy explicitly does want to remove the actual mechanics of exchange and the market system itself, as radical as that may seem to most. 
you have to understand, first of all, that the problems we're seeing in the world is not the result of some bad policy or some legislation or some inflationary cycle, boom and bust phenomenon that we're typically taught in traditional economics. The very foundation of the economic structure is intrinsically flawed. You realize this, we live in a technical reality, not a monetary one. And if we, for example, one, one child dies every five seconds from poverty and preventable diseases on this planet. This is, of course, unnecessary technically. We could easily feed everyone on this planet. And when you extrapolate that train of thought, when you take a technical perspective as opposed to a monetary perspective, we see we could resolve just about all of the major human woes on this planet by restructuring the entire economic phenomenon to be true Truly economic, meaning well, Peter, you were talking though earlier about you were talking earlier and you said you know everyone suffers by this system. I think that maybe uh, let's clarify a little bit. Uh, a lot of people suffer, but there are some people who want to keep this system exactly how it is. Isn't that right? Yeah, I'd say the upper one percent certainly is in uh, certainly has a prime interest, has a very easy way to justify uh, the fruits that they've they've claimed. We have 1% of the world's population owning 40% of the planet's wealth. If that isn't a signpost to the intrinsic flaw of this system, that it's there to perpetuate one class over another, I'm not sure what is. So yes, the upper 1% has a very vested interest, and naturally that carries on to the governments, which are essentially funded and supported by the corporate institutions. And I know you've that continue this. You've written about this uh, large gap between the rich and poor, and I know one point that you've made in your writings is that America is one of the most socially immobile countries in the world. I kind of had to stop and read that again when I saw that, uh, but basically what you're saying, I think, is if you're born poor, chances are you'll stay poor, other than, of course, a few exceptions. Yeah. Uh, how does this change under the zeitgeist system? Well, it's not the zeitgeist system. Uh, this work builds upon uh, research from, by the name of Jacques Fresco, which builds upon researchers from, from well, the past 150 years, people that have continually thought about a different economic model not based on monetary exchange and all of the intrinsic problems that come out of that. Uh, the Venus Project is something important to mention, which I su suggest people look into. That is our partnership with the Zeitgeist Movement. And it's a blueprint system based on referencing natural law. And what that means is you actually get to the life ground, as I mentioned earlier. You look at what it means to make a human being, what it means to meet the needs of the human necessity, from obviously the bare necessities to all of the emotional and uh, biopsychosocial phenomenon that actually generate our behavior, generate our well-being, our mental health. When you put all this together, Together, which is a completely technical orientation, very limited when it comes to human opinion. This is what science has given us, by the way. You see that the current economic model is stuck in time. It's not actually re representing what meets human needs. And the more you step back and look at how we could technically provide for the human population, eliminate war, eliminate famine, eliminate poverty, eliminate 95% of most crime, which, by the way, is monetary related, you begin to see that an entirely new approach can be taken. It's very difficult for me to describe that to you in a very short little segment, but a resource-based economy is based upon resource management intrinsically. Monetary relationships don't manage anything. We have cost efficiency. We have all of these things that inhibit our ability to create sustainable goods. We have established institutions that are constantly trying to preserve their market share. It's essentially a mafia orientation. It's one group against another. Everyone's battling, and we have this illusion that somehow it's for the betterment of us, that we, we have this self-interest, and it isn't. It hasn't, it's provably not if you look through history and what we're actually doing to ourselves, and we're on a train wreck to a complete environmental disaster and a social disaster. Don't tell people what you know. The average person, they have no idea what's going on between them and the real world. The more control they have over money digitally, electrically, the easier it is to do that. It's the greatest fraud that's been perpetrated on mankind this century. Money doesn't really exist, it's a theory. What are those guys doing? If you look at how the world's been acquired, it's been done by a banking scam where you lend people money that doesn't exist, we call it credit. Why don't we learn about money in school? We've been through a process of banks lending credit, figures on a screen, greatly in excess of what they have as assets, called fractional reserve lending. And when they can't pay it back, because often the banks have made 
have taken actions that have crashed the economy, like in 2008, the banks then get all the things they've lent money on, the real wealth of the world. And what's happened in this process of lending credit, getting the real resources when they can't pay back the credit, has sucked the wealth of the world, the real wealth of the world, into the hands of a very, very few people and left out there most of the rest of the population with something called money. And money only buys anything because we take it seriously. You know, if, 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 if it's just a piece of paper, and this is the point, it's meant not even to be a piece of paper, it's meant to, to be purely electronic. Um, and so we have this fresh air money that is worth something because the buyer and the seller believe in it, and only because of that. And the real wealth of the world has been sucked into the hands of a very few people by lending this scam called credit. And the idea eventually, problem, reaction, solution, create the problem and then offer the solution, is to have a gigantic crash, which they will instigate, and then to overcome the crash, they will propose a totally new economic system of central control to be the solution to the problem they've created, which is crashing the economy. And the more control they have over money, digitally, electrically, the easier it is to do that. This cashless society is one key element in a whole transformation of human society to total control that involves almost every area of our lives, indeed it does. You cannot divorce what I've just been talking about. The manipulation to the cashless society and the microchipped human from the fact that our freedom of speech and our freedom of communication is being squeezed by the day. And Google, YouTube, owned by Google, Facebook, Twitter, who are increasingly openly, blatantly using algorithms to filter out information that the system doesn't want people to see. And the moderator said, oh, this, you know, this future isn't going to happen. We can't see this. Aren't we a competitive you know, human race, everyone seeking their own gain. No, throughout most of history, we're the most social creature. We organized our economy socially. We worked together, we, we shared. That's the nature of human nature, to be extremely social. We had a short reign of a couple hundred years during the industrial stage of capitalism, first and second industrial revolution, where we sort of got off that track. We're getting back on the track again. And the irony of it all is it's the technology of the free market and the capitalist system that took us to near zero marginal cost and provided the opening for this new journey in history. So I welcome a hybrid economy, part capitalist market, part collaborative commons. And for all you young people here, make this journey happen. As a remnant of antiquity, money now largely serves as a mechanism of corruption, deprivation, and control from the hands of a few. It's corrupted everything. I mean, every institution that we live in is corrupted by money. It, what's fascinating to me is that we can become enslaved by something that we've created. Not physically, but just mentally enslaved by a notion that was invented by humanity. You know, it is archaic because I think we've grown past what money can do. It is well enough that the people of the nation do not understand our banking and money system. Or if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. Henry Ford, Ford Motor Company. In a desperate attempt to survive, many work multiple jobs. They may steal, lie, or embezzle. So stress producing to the average person. Worries about rent, losing their job, can't pay off the house. On a bigger scale, the profit motive creates a ruthless cycle of devastation. Illness, pollution, and war are accepted as normal. But it does benefit the few at the top who live parasitically by the manipulation and control of money. The banking system right now 
is effectively enslaving individuals, enslaving students, enslaving institutions, and sucking resources from them. They set it up so that there would be private central banks that could charge everybody interest on the currency and allow themselves to get rich without having to do anything. Who's been doing all of this? It's a group of bankers, uh, the Federal Reserve System, that's a private system. The Fed is a private bank owned by private stockholders. Do not let the name Federal fool you. In 1913, which is when Woodrow Wilson allowed the Federal Reserve System legislation to be passed, most of the Congress people had gone home. This legislation turned the central bank system of the United States over to the Federal Reserve Board, making them the only group that could issue Federal Reserve notes for U.S. dollars. President Wilson, he regretted that. He said that he had just sold this country downstream. A great industrial nation is controlled by its system of credit. Our system of credit is concentrated. The growth of the nation, therefore, and all our activities are in the hands of a few men. We have come to be one of the worst ruled, one of the most completely controlled and dominated governments in the civilized world. A government by the opinion and the duress of small groups of dominant men. President Woodrow Wilson, 1916. It's a fiat system that we operate under and it's actually someone punching numbers on a computer somewhere. That is how we manufacture money today. There's nothing backing it, there's nothing behind it. When government spends more than it collects in taxes and needs money, it does not print its own money, but borrows from the Federal Reserve in exchange for U.S. bonds, which the Fed provides at interest. When people and corporations want money, they go to banks as well. The system is rigged. If a bank buys a $100 bond, the bank gets to lend out 10 times that amount, or $1,000. They created the extra funds from nothing. No money, gold, or anything to back it up. The bank also gets back the loans with interest for all the money lent. Money is created this way from the simple signature of a borrower with the promise to pay it back. And to make matters worse, very often people are paying the amount back many times over due to the interest. This is the process by which individuals, companies, and governments acquire money. It is respectably referred to as fractional reserve lending and is used globally by most other banking systems, keeping people and entire nations in perpetual debt.